Today we're going to the Nathan Hale Homestead, which is located in Coventry, Connecticut. It's a historic gem that offers visitors a glimpse into the life of one of America's heroes. This charming 18th century farmhouse was the childhood home of Nathan Hale, a courageous American patriot who famously declared, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country, before being hanged by the British during the Revolutionary War. Built in 1776, the homestead showcases typical Georgian-style architecture of the period, featuring a central chimney and symmetrical facade. Surrounded by picturesque grounds and period gardens, the property exudes a sense of colonial charm. Visitors can explore the well-preserved interiors, including period-accurate furnishings and artifacts that provide insight into the daily life during the late 1700s. Throughout the year, the Nathan Hale Homestead hosts various events and educational programs that bring history to life. Visitors may experience reenactments, hear stories about colonial life, and participate in hands-on activities. Nathan Hale was indeed a notable figure in American history, recognized for his role as a spy during the American Revolutionary War. Born on June 6, 1755 in Coventry, Connecticut, Hale came from a family with a strong commitment to education and public service. He graduated from Yale College in 1773 and his intelligence, charisma, and sense of duty led him to become a school teacher. In 1775, as tensions between the American colonies and Great Britain escalated into open conflict, Hale joined the Continental Army and quickly rose to the rank of captain. In the early stages of the Revolutionary War, General George Washington sought volunteers for a dangerous mission behind enemy lines to gather intelligence on British troop movements and plans. In September 1776, during the Battle of Long Island, Washington asked for a volunteer to go behind enemy lines and gather information on the British forces. Hale stepped forward, understanding the risks involved. Disguised as a school teacher, he infiltrated the British-occupied New York City, but was captured by the British on September 21, 1776, while attempting to return to enemy lines. While the circumstances of Nathan Hale's capture are well documented, there have been some historic debates and alternative theories about the details leading to his arrest. The first is that it was a loyalist betrayal. One theory suggests that Hale may have been betrayed by a loyalist or someone sympathetic to the British cause. Some historians believe that Hale's mission was compromised by an informant who revealed his true identity to the British authorities. This may or may not have taken place in a bar where when confronted and asked if he was a spy, Nathan Hale, who could not lie, said yes. There is some debate over the effectiveness of Hale's disguise as a school teacher. While some argue that his cover was convincing, others question whether he managed to effectively blend in with British occupied New York City. It's possible that Hale's cover was not as secure as he had hoped, leading to suspicion and subsequent capture. The generally accepted narrative is that Hale was captured by a British patrol while attempting to return to enemy lines. However, the specific circumstances of this capture, such as whether he was apprehended on the road or in a house, or that he flagged down the wrong ship looking for his rescue, are not definitively established. Some historians continue to explore the exact details of how and where Hale was seized. While these theories may raise interesting questions, the most widely accepted account is that Nathan Hale was captured by the British, interrogated, and subsequently executed for his role as a spy during the Revolutionary War. The lack of a trial and the swift nature of his execution have contributed to the enduring image of Hale as a patriotic martyr in American history. One should actually note that the beautiful homestead that we call the Nathan Hale Homestead is not actually the home that he grew up in. Rather, he grew up in a small little footprint of a home about this size, as that was all the family could afford. 
but many of the family's artifacts are now in this home. So let's take a look. This of course was the kitchen where the hustle and bustle of daily life would take place. You can imagine with 12 children, what was going on in this kitchen at the time. This room is allocated as a sick room. You can see that there are some apothecary jars up there, and often when a member of the family was ill, they would put them close to the fire, and they would tend to their sick right there in the room next to the fire. And you see there's a bed here set up just for that purpose. Five of the Hale brothers were fighting in the war. One thing that you might find very interesting is that the clothing for the soldiers was not supplied by the regiment. Rather, the family had to make their own uniforms. And so two of the sisters stayed behind while the Hale brothers fought and created the uniforms for their soldier brothers. This is Nathan Hale's father. What you would never believe is that this portrait was painted of his father not when he was 50 or 60 years old, but rather 23. I guess the hard times of life sure did age people back then. As was often the case in the early days, when multiple families in one family lived in a house, they occupied separate rooms. This was the room of John Hale and his family. Now this room had carpeting in it. This is not the original carpeting, but it would have been something very similar. And it also, being a parlor and a good room, would have also had wallpaper. This furniture belonged to the Hale family. And we also know that John Hale inherited a good sum of money and had money of his own. And we can see that in some of the beauty of the rooms. This portrait is of Lydia. She is the great niece of Nathan Hale. She was the very first missionary in the Baptist church to travel to China. 
She served the people of China for a couple years and then contracted appendicitis at the age of 27 and died. She is now buried in Wachung, China. Another notable person who owned this room was George Dudley Seymour, who was a patent attorney. Seymour loved Nathan Hale. So when he stumbled upon this property in 1914, he was appalled to find out that this was a chicken coop. Yes, people, many of the old homes have been many things through the years. Thank goodness he restored the house. What this dear man found was of very significant importance. Upstairs in one of the bedrooms was actually a silhouette on the door of Nathan Hale. And that is the only picture we actually have of him to determine his likeness. The statues and the artist's renderings are not entirely accurate. Another interesting thing about this room is there is a secret passageway going from the left side of the fireplace through to another room. Now the secret passageway was so dark I could hardly film it because of course there was no available light in there. But you can see where you would crawl through the one door of the parlor and you'd crawl through this little area that would then bring you out into a whole nother room. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go upstairs. In 1800, this was the boys' bedroom. It is now used as a memorial for the Revolutionary War paraphernalia. This beautiful bedroom was the bedroom that belonged to the girls, the sisters, and guests would also come and stay in this bedroom. Isn't it gorgeous? Look at the blue coloring. 12 children and many generations of people growing up in this house, there is no shortage of stories that could be told here. I just love a good story of an old historic home, don't you?